Welcome to Out of the Blank. Welcome back to another episode of Out of the Blank Podcast. I'm here with a special guest. He's been he's known me for five years, I think. Four years now, three years, two years, one year. I think about three. Yeah. I think about three. You were on the show from episode 400, and look where we're at. No, 300, I think. Oh my God, dude, I've lost so much memory. I can't remember when my guests were on. It's getting bad. I have it written down somewhere. I'll have to find it. I, I think I've been on three times before this, but it was it was definitely three something, was the first one. It's either my memory is getting bad or I'm doing too many episodes. Might be a mix of the two. <laughs> you do a lot of episodes, so I'm sure they start to blend together. I try and keep it interesting. Plus, I'm lonely. So, Matt, <laughs> entertain me. What's up, man? How's it been? You haven't, we, haven't, we haven't talked in a while. You bet you're still interested in time travel? I am. I am. Um, I haven't really heard much new about it, but it still intrigues me. It, it grabs my attention. Um, there's a part of me that is holding out hope that it could really be a thing and not just something interesting to, to think about, but, um, yeah, no, I, I still, I'm very interested and in anything I can find, I, uh, I certainly consume, but I don't do a lot of reading on it because I've decided that I want to punish myself and continue to be in school perpetually. So <laughs> why are you still in school? Well, I finished my bachelor's about five months ago. Oh, congratulations. And thank you. Thank you. And I started a master's program about a week ago. What a piece of shit. I just can't. I, can't. I know. I know. Well, when your company pays 90% of it, you kind of feel like, why not? Just do it. You know, Nike. <laughs> what? <laughs> just do it. Nike, that, just do oh, it. Oh, okay. I thought you said your company was <laughs> Nike. I was like, I thought you sold like insurance or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I am in insurance. <laughs> so what are you going for a master's for? That's a lot of uh, work. Yeah, I mean, the fact that most of it's paid for. The I hell you were learning from an education system what that you can't learn on my show. Let me tell you, I learn a lot more on your show. That's huh. true. I know. But I don't think that you you pass out degrees just yet. So, you know. I thought about going back to school to be like a historian just because I'm just so interested in history right now, specifically the Cold War and just like all the LSD experiments and stuff like, dude, oh, my God, it can make you good. Sometimes I'm like I'm covering up my drink now before I go and take a sip of it with like a napkin just in case. You know, I told everybody since I was doing like a JFK film, I was like, hey, my car is fine. I'm in a great place in my life right now. So if I turn up fucking missing because of some suspicious circumstances, it was probably the government. And you got to be careful. You got to be careful when you're diving into stuff like that. I don't need to be careful with anything that I, you're studying freaking, you're, you're looking into time travel when that guy who gets in his refrigerator every morning, waiting for it to send him back 10 years, you know, once he figures it out, you're going to be in trouble. <laughs> you know what? You might be right. You might, you could absolutely be right on that. Because they don't want us to know. If it's real, they don't want us to know. I hate that talk. I really do. I hate it when someone's like, they don't want us to know. And it sucks because going through government documents to make sure I have all the documents to back up whatever I'm going to bring up in my thing. It all says destroy at the bottom. And I'm like, damn it. Like if so, well, you know, someone says, hey, they destroyed that document. I can't say that he just doesn't want to bring up the facts. He actually might be freaking right, which is a great thing. But we're lucky that the government for every document that they write, there's like three of them. So it's like trying to destroy the documents. I mean, if you me and you are you ever see the show Loki when it came out? No. Well, when when he gets into the room, the guy's like, can you sign this? This is every single word you've ever said. He goes, what? And then that prints out of the printer and he puts it on the top and he goes, sign this too. And every time you say something, it would keep adding another stack to the paper. That's like the government. They just type up whatever, everything that ever gets spoken is like written down, unless it's like a secret knock on a door and a handshake. You know, I, 
if we're not already there, we definitely could be there very easily. I mean, I'm sure we've talked about this before, but you know, you say something or you say, oh, I may want to get, I don't know, I'm looking at maybe getting a new watch. And then all of a sudden you get ads for watches every time you open Instagram. Like it, it listens, it listens. I don't know how much it, it tells and to who, but these devices are listening to us, man. When you say that, that crazy, but when you say that though, do you mean that when the device is listening, you think the device is like more autonomous to be able to listen? To? I mean, I've talked about this before. You're sleeping and you, you wake up, you get an ad for a sleep apnea thing. You're like, holy shit, my phone just told me I have sleep apnea before I realized I have sleep apnea because it's just listening to you. So do you think it's your phone that's targeting you that way? Or do you think some person is like a 911 operator just secretly listening into your phone? And he's like, can you imagine? No. Okay. Well, that'd be crazy. Imagine you're getting a fight no, with like your I, ex or something like that. Dude, I, I would want, I would pay a million dollars to get the phone conversation of the person listening to OJ's phone the night he did allegedly his, you know, he got his trophies back. I'm going to say that one because the other one's going to be a little bit hotter topic. Well, and, and the hotter topic, the phone would have been so primitive that it probably wouldn't have. That's a good point. It wouldn't have been anything like what we have now, so it wouldn't have worked the same way, probably. But Can you no, imagine that taking think... that to your grave? You have the you can't you don't want to admit that you heard OJ kill these two people because if you do, then you're gonna expose the secret that they're listening into our phones. But then you feel like it's your civic duty to tell the truth because if the glove didn't fit, you must have quit. Somehow I always bring up OJ. I don't know why. I just that's All one right, topic I haven't got in there. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I don't know. I think um, that that would be a conundrum because if you can't expose what you're doing, then, but but no, I don't think it's actually like a person sitting there listening, like how they, how, you know, those memes like, oh, my, my FBI agent watching what I'm doing or listening in. Like, I don't think it's like that. Um, I mean, hell, who knows with the FBI lately, but I feel like it's more the device listens and then it's all based on algorithms and like it'll pick up on keywords and it'll know which words fit which ads. And I feel like it's more like that. Like it's listening, but I think it's all AI. I like how you said the FBI recently. What do you mean by that? Well, I feel like over the years, um, not just the past few months, but I feel like over the past several years, there's been a bit of a sense that there might be more corruption than we would have expected. I'm not a Trumper, but when I saw, when I was on the treadmill, I saw the, the, the TV station above, uh, cause there's TV right in front and it showed the government documents they found at Trump's little mansion thing. And it said top secret stamped in like a picture perfect thing. And I was just like, all right. Is anybody else catching bullshit? Like, I don't look, I, I bet he took some shit. I'm not defending the man. I'm just saying you have a giant thing on your document. What to label it top secret. So, you know, and don't forget you stamp all over the front thing where you can't even read the letters top secret. To me, it looked like the magic or the, the three shots fired from the book depository building. There's just three fucking little shells placed in a take a picture. It's like, Fuck, I don't know, but our society today, we take pictures of our food faster than we do when it just comes to eating it. I like to sit down and eat my meal, and the person's like, hang on a second. I want to take a photo. I'm like, hang on a second. I'm going to get napkins. <laughs> well, two, two things I'll, I'll address, because you know I got to address the food analogy, right? I, I can't bypass that. I'll get to that in a second. Um, I definitely wouldn't say that I'm defending anything either. I, I don't know enough about it but from what i gather when those boxes get packed it's not the president saying oh yes take these five secret files and put them in box number two johnny like they don't have i think as much control over that process as people think who the from fuck what is I gather, johnny you said it twice now it, it's just a random name well johnny last time i was calling you johnny because you used the johnny cochran if the glove doesn't fit you must quit that was okay. johnny cochran I don't know about the OJ trial. I was too young when that happened. Oh, the OJ trial is very interesting. Very interesting. There have been tons of documentaries on it. Um, there was a, a TV series that was made about it on FX. I had the pathologist, the pathologist who was there for 
uh, the OJ thing was also in my film. So that's interesting. I didn't I didn't talk to him about OJ, though. That's the next topic. I got to get off the JFK thing. That's later. I'll make another documentary about that. You've been on the JFK thing a while. O OJ might be a good topic to dive into next. I want to get him on my show. Oh, I've I mean, tried for be... two years. He's not doing it. Really? He, all he oh, does is out. talk about fantasy sports on his Twitter. Hello, Twitter world. I'm like, <laughs> but it's not even real sports. It's fantasy sports. Right, right. Well, I mean, fantasy sports is so interesting to some people because it's driven by what the real athletes do. So for some people, it makes it more interesting to watch the game. Even if it's maybe not the team that you root for, you might want to watch because you want to see if – you know, the quarterback that you've got in that game throws a touchdown or not. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's the benefit of it, though. I don't I don't really play fantasy sports. I haven't in years, but that's the benefit of it. No, I get it. I daydream of scoring a winning touchdown for the Baltimore Ravens at one point, And my dad finally giving me a hug. Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. I just don't want to do it. Like, I have better things to do. You know what I mean? No, no, me too. Absolutely. To, to me, it's like a chore. You've got to every week. Oh, I got to set my lineup. You know, is somebody on my team injured or are they not playing? Are they suspended? Or you have to like figure that out and be strategic with it. And to me, I, I don't find it fun. A lot of people find it to be a blast. Not my thing. You would find it fun if you had kids and there was nothing else you could do with your life besides going home and waiting for the eventual day. You take a revolver and just, you know. Wow. Got real dark real i do quick. that a lot at my work too people are like jesus i'm like okay so i had this like joke i was like i was like i told my buddy i was well my boss i was like hey i'm gonna ask this girl out he's like no you're not i'm like i'm gonna ask this girl out and watch how i do it just walk up go hey my name's robbie it's nice to meet you shake their hand and then once we're done shaking hands i go can i get your phone number and they're like i don't know you i'm like i just introduced myself <laughs> it's just i just immediately <laughs> get upset and it's just like that's the best thing ever because it's true you did just introduce yourself but now you turn the tables you make them feel guilty i'm kidding but that's did a good one number no i said i was kidding it's a good that's a good one though yeah i mean might work depending on who you try it on it might work or you get shot or pepper sprayed well that too you got to be careful like never know jumping in a hammock there's always that risk that it might just flip over well does anybody really jump into a hammock hell yeah like is that has that ever been successful yes have you is this from experience i don't that think you're, you're speaking i haven't been in a hammock since i was 12 years old that's very specific too like do you think about hammocks often that you know it's no, it's life been... went to shit after 12, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's what? If my math is right, that's what, like, what, 12, 13 years then? About 12 years, yeah. 12 years, okay. Interesting. I haven't been in a pool in, like, five years. I was saw my little nephew. He had floaties on. He's four years old. He's swimming in the water with floaties on. I told my brother, I was like, what the hell's going on? He's like, what? I was like, you haven't taught him to swim yet? No, Rob, he's four. And he's a, I was swimming when I was like one, dude. And he was like, no, no, man, no. I, I, I'm working, dude. I'm like, I'll do it. I'll hop in the, so that's my goal for, you know, next years to figure out how to get him to swim without floaties. Also go to a fair. I need to go to a fair. And having a little kid, I'll borrow my brothers and just take them there. No roller coasters though. Well, have you ever been to a fair? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if they have a roller coaster at a fair, it's probably the little like dragon one that just goes in a circle. That's probably okay. If you go to a fair and there's like anything bigger than that, that's a roller coaster. I'd be a little concerned about it. Well, my brother took him on the Ferris wheel. I won't do that, but I don't like Ferris wheels, but it, uh, we, I asked him, I was like, did you have fun? And he was like, yeah. I was like, what's wrong? He was like, I got sick. I was like, what? <laughs> Cause I got sick. And he's, he was so upset. Like, he was, like, not, like, crying. He was just, like, d disappointed in himself. I was like, oh, buddy, it's okay, man. It was so heartbreaking. I was like, oh, my God, it's okay, dude. I'm pretty sure my brother, unless my brother gave him shit for it. I, he probably did. I don't know. I'm not going to talk trash. But it was just so dis. I was like, I'll take you to the fair, buddy. You ever been on bumper cars? Like, no. And I was like, what? I was like, what's your favorite snack? He's like, apple. I'm like, apple? What do you mean an apple is your favorite? Like, what's your favorite food, man? And he's like, 
apple. I was like, what? And then my mom's like, oh, his mom doesn't let him have any junk food. I was like, what? I was like, you've never had taquitos. And he's like, no. I'm like, what the hell? It's like, I don't even know my own family. Like, holy shit. Yeah. I love how you've got like these super random things. Like you think about junk food. Most people would say like, oh, chips or French fries or like chicken nuggets or something. And you're just like, taquitos. Taquitos, dude. <laughs> Jose Ole I mean, from Food Lion. Yeah. Listen, they're I, they're phenomenal. I can I'm kill a 32 pack not. by myself, man. No, I don't believe that. I do. Come on. Yeah. My top, I think, food I've ever eaten was at the China buffet when they used to let you do actually all you can eat. 128 California rolls in one sitting. Pretty sure we've talked about this before as well, too. I did not feel no, good. Afterwards. I think this is the first time I've heard that. I did not feel good afterwards. I can imagine that you wouldn't feel good afterwards. I've eaten far less and felt terrible afterwards. I'll, so I'll tell you recently, I just, I drank two giant jars of moonshine last month and I had, was it, I think it was two dozen crabs by myself. My buddy ordered himself a dozen. Crabs, not crab legs, crab crabs. Yes. My buddy ordered a, do you saw it on my Instagram. My buddy ordered, I said, best feeling in the world is drunk and eating crabs. My buddy ordered one dozen. I had two. I, he said he was going to order three. I said, dude, I can eat them until there's no more left. And that's what I did. Wow. Now, I, I don't, I, I did see that, but I don't think I knew how many you had. I how feel, long did that take? Because that's, that's a lot of work to. A couple hours. Okay. All right. I mean, for where you live, I'm sure you're a pro at it because crabs are kind of like the thing there. But still, that's, that's a lot of work. Yeah, well, that's the point of you don't go and eat crabs like people that go to restaurants and order crabs. That's OK if you're doing like a small dining thing. But if you're actually going to enjoy crabs, it's a sit down experience. The whole reason like Ryan Sickler has a show called The Crab Feast, which is that you sit down. You don't you can't touch your phone because you got old bay on your fingers. You're it's like an intimate thing. There's no cell. It's just like how my show is. There's no phones. There's none of that. It's just me and you chatting and you don't know where it's going to go. That's the whole point of conversation is that deep random fun whatever cry doesn't matter just it's that thing and that's the importance of you need to have those moments in life if you're letting the fbi agents listen in on your phone eventually they're gonna come across like matt like i wanted to say this a minute ago imagine you're fighting with like your ex like i said oj and then they hear all that and then they got dirt on you that's how blackmail happens yeah i mean i, I don't think that we're at a place where somebody's actively listening unless unless you're under investigation and you and i are well at least i don't think i'm high profile enough all the jfk stuff you've been talking maybe you are now but i don't think anybody's actively listening i think that it's probably being stored somewhere so yeah i mean that's that's definitely a concern and and even even if you just look at technology from a simple perspective, you look at a lot of the things that, that famous people end up getting in trouble for. Well, years ago, there were no cell phones. Like you could go in public, there could be an incident. Something could happen. They could do something screwed up, bad, but it wouldn't get out because it wasn't recorded. It couldn't go viral on the internet. There was no internet. So, you know, think about that. Well, it's definitely everything that you probably do. If you get in a car accident, you're going to have like 10 video cameras that probably catch it. Um, that's like one of the, I talked to a memory specialist and like, you, you see a lot of this, like um, stuff with like JFK stuff, like some of the doctors never saw the Zapruder film. And then once they did the autopsy, uh, then they saw the Zapruder film and they changed their statement. So it's like, you have a, your brain might remember one thing. I mean, it's difficult to say people's memories are all different, um, but I mean, videos influence the truth. I mean, if you see something, it necessarily it could change your opinion of how you thought you saw something. Most people probably remember an interaction and they remember somebody else starting it, but then they see a video of them being the aggressor in a situation and then they change it. Um, but that's the society we live in. Everyone's got their cameras out. Um, you probably have a thousand different angles of yourself just i mean i don't know how many if you ask one person hand me your cell phone let me count how many selfies you have that's a that's, <laughs> that's a rough question we're gonna be here a while right right no i i think you make a good point but what's a little bit 
scary about photos and, and now even video. It's so easy with like deep fakes and it's so easy to make something that, you know, it looks like one thing, but it really was another. Um, you could make it look like people that weren't even there were there. Like, I mean, you should probably remember, I guess it was sometime maybe last year or two years ago, the, the Tom Cruise deep fakes. There was a guy that was making videos and he was like, I guess doing all these dances or whatever, but he superimposed Tom Cruise's face on his face. And nobody knew at first that it wasn't Tom Cruise. They're like, oh, look, he's gone crazy again. Like, look at him. But it wasn't even him. It started off with compliments. It would be like, oh, I'm going to put this photo of me and Tom Cruise in a photo. And then it got really weird where they had like Gal Gadot in a sex scene. And Gal Gadot was upset. She was like, somebody's using my face on a deep fake in a porno. That's not me. And I'm like, oh, can you do any of these moves? <laughs> <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> That'll decide if we make a Wonder Woman 3. <laughs> oh, if only you were in charge of the, the studio, right? No, it would all be a mess. I'm trying to get my movie okay. listed on IMDb right now. It's a pain in the ass. Yeah? Is that a like a multiple step process or what what's that like? You know what IMDb is, right? A absolutely, yeah. Well, right now I've the... never made a movie to to try to put put it on there though so i don't it's know not complete so i can't fin file out the forms yet but it's like i'm making okay. it free and it's just a lot of this is a lot of work i don't want to talk about it <laughs> i don't want to talk about it you don't want to talk about how awesome you are okay no. I, I get it it's not me being awesome <laughs> it's a pain in the ass i'm losing fucking that's why i got a haircut because i was losing hair Jeez. no i'm just kidding <laughs> shit i'm indestructible son no i'm just kidding <laughs> does not give anybody cause to shoot me in a street. Don't do that. Uh, yeah, please don't do that. Okay. Besides time, you got to have another topic interest of you. If I'm interested in JFK right now, we're not talking about it, so I don't want to talk about it. And don't ask me any questions because I'll answer them without even thinking. Um, but what's another topic? One Or one thing that you'd like to know more about? Hmm. You got to be doing research on the side for something. You haven't done the food page in forever. This is true. This is true. It's been actually, I think it's been over two years. It's Did your like, stepbrother get divorced yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's a throwback to the last episode. Oh, that is. No, no. He's um, October will be a year that he's been married now. Damn. That's the last time we talked. Was that the last time we talked? You were was around the time he got married. I think it was probably more towards uh, you were epi last episode was 1020. 1020, 1021, 22, maybe one of those. So unless, okay, I found it. So unless I'm missing, you anything, were right next to Mick West. So I was on, I was 366, 800, 856. So that was actually kind of a quick turnaround between those two. And then 954 was the fourth one. There was another one. I don't know. Those are the four that I have here. I don't know if I forgot to write it down. But... How much do you want to bet I can guess the number? It's going to be 1,020, 22. I'm going to say 21 or 22. Okay. okay. I'm pulling up okay. my Spotify right now. Let's go. One thousand twenty. Because you know what? Yeah, I think you're. I think you're right. Because I think we were talking about. I know I'm right. Because it's you would stop for. <laughs> you know you're right. Okay. You're right by Mix West, dude. I know for a fact. It's where I, we, we talked. Stopped. We talked about my dreams. You, yeah, you. you would one thousand and twenty. I knew it. One thousand and twenty. Wow, Mick West is one thousand nineteen. Writing that down. One thousand and twenty. I know. Okay, talked, so this is a, actually my. I had fifth, a horrible no, dream again too. Sixth time. Oh, dreams still interest me. I want to learn more, but they still interest me. So what's what's this dream? Oh, we're Are not going there yet. This is, no, not yet. Maybe not. I don't know. We've hit in a new direction. I got a new audience. I don't think they want to hear about my dream. <laughs> so what do they want to hear about? I don't know. You got to give them some cool information. It relies on my guests now. I don't have to do a damn thing. I could just sit here and no, I'm just kidding. But I want to know what you got. You got to have something you're interested in besides time. You said you haven't looked into that in a while. So what's the new kick? 
I would still say that the dreams are interesting to me. Not, not just because you just said it, but they are. Um, I think that the regret I have about it is I don't remember enough of them to be able to really break them down. And typically what I'll do, if I do remember it, I take notes. Like as soon as I wake up, I try to take notes on it. Um, you said this on your last episode. I, I know I did. I know I did. I actually did have a, a dream and I, I don't know why I didn't take notes on it, but what I remember, this was just last night, like this just happened. What I remember is I was looking at my hair, right? And I'm standing there and my hairline was like back here. <laughs> I had hair in the oh, middle fuck. and then like nothing right here. And I was like, oh, my hair, my hair. And I was like devastated, right? But I, I don't know what else happened. I don't know what caused it or if it's just manifestation of, like I always say, I don't care if I go gray. I just, I can't lose my hair because I have an odd shaped head. So bald would not be a good look for me. I don't know if that's why it happened, but I just like, I barely had any hair left and I, it was not pleasant. And then I woke up. What do you think that means? Um, I think it means that whether I'm conscious of it or not, I'm thinking about that more often than I thought I was. <clears throat> do you think you're going to die soon or something? Are you getting old? I, I sure hope not. But, okay. but what about Mike Tyson, by the way? Speaking of dying soon, did you hear he thinks he's about to die? What? Oh, yeah. He said he knows his time is short. He's about to die. You didn't hear that? No. Yeah. I don't know what he thinks, like, if he knows that something's wrong with him and he's just not saying or if he if he's just saying it to say that he, he believes that he doesn't have much time left, which is weird because I feel like less than two years ago, he was training to fight again. That was less than a year ago. Okay. Less than a year ago then. I knew it was recent, but now all of a sudden, like, in the airport, he's getting pushed around in a wheelchair and I don't know. I don't know what the deal is, but he, he apparently said, like, I know my days are numbered. Jesus. That sucks. I got to get him on the show. I need to talk to that guy. He's really freaking smart. I've used a lot of examples that he talked about. I don't know if you've ever seen his Joe Rogan podcast he did, where he talked for like three and a half hours about with Joe Rogan. He talked about the ancient Egyptians. That man is very, very knowledgeable on ancient history. He goes, you know how you see every single hieroglyph of like a skinny Egyptian? He goes, did you know they just chose not to write down the heavier ones? They chose not to inscribe that in their history books. They also didn't inscribe the fact that they used massive amounts of psychedelics and cocaine. They found cocaine in the hair of one of the Egyptian people, that they, one of the kings or the princes or whatever, stuck in his hair. They chose not to, to – you don't – look at our history books. Our history books, and I've used this example multiple times, and it's probably the last time I'll use it. Our history, it's told like Superman. You have this idea of Superman. Well, the reality is Superman smokes cigarettes and he's a bit of a drinker. Like that's that's the reality of of our history. I think that's a great fucking quote. I'm gonna put that on a bumper sticker. That is good. It's mine. <laughs> I patented it. Don't steal it, anybody. <laughs> but it's true no, though, but... and that's like the Egyptians' history. They didn't write down, and you gotta look. I've talked to so many historians. Look at every single reason why something happens. There's a reason behind it. Someone is seeing something that you're not seeing in a different perspective, and you're looking at it from an aerial viewpoint, where at this point, you're doing the opposite of what historians should do, which at this point, a historian would try and make sure that they look at it not from a personal experience or what we know now, but just from an experience of the overall events that are happening in the area. Man, look, I had Steve on here. Steve, um, oh God, Strabo, I think his last name is I, Steve Whitehead. He goes by. But he's the Spartan History podcast, and he's talking about this issue that he has right now with dealing with how there's a lot of people that want to make Achilles gay. And a lot of it comes from the basis of the Troy movie where he's working with his friend or companion, and they have this close relationship in the movie where it kind of looks like they might be lovers at some point. Then you look at ancient history, and a lot of the Spartans were gay, um, mostly because they believed if you had a love connection with your partner that you had in battle you protect them more and you would fight better to make sure that one of them wouldn't or the one wouldn't die so they thought it'd be best to have this army of 300 have this love relationship you never saw that in the movies but that's real and they're 
history is trying to be like, okay, well, maybe Achilles was because he had this close relationship. But there's context to that situation because if you look at what happened to Achilles after his friend died, he's like over mourning. He's doing all these crazy things. He goes to war. He does a bunch of stuff. He seems like he lost a lover. But if you look closely at it, the way the guy died was he dressed up as Achilles and impersonated him and was killed in battle because they thought it was Achilles. So it's not really a lover's thing. It's more of like a, oh shit, I just got my best friend killed, you know? So it's like, you have to examine those things, but I mean, who knows? I mean, you have to go back with a fucking time machine. If that guy in the refrigerator box ever figures it out. <laughs> Man, always with the callbacks. You I'm always good tie at that. it back in. I'm good you're, at that. You're good. You're good. Yeah. I, I never, never heard that about, uh, you know, like ancient warriors, but the, the thing with, uh, Egypt that's kind of interesting so so fat shaming is not a new thing then if they just just did all the the skinny people when they that's recorded fair. their history that's fair <laughs> I mean there's a reason why every pharaoh and every king and every movie is like overweight and eating grapes or something like that it's not just high class I mean obviously you had people that had body you know genetic things that caused that but they didn't write any of it down and I mean, that's the way the TV works. Did you see the Uncharted with Tom Holland? Mark Wahlberg's 5'8". Tom Holland's 5'7". Every other person in that fucking movie was 5'8 or 5'7". There was not a six-foot tall person in that whole entire film. I pointed it out. I was like, holy shit, that's how they got all the thing to look normal. But the main character, Enemy, was a woman. She was like 5'6". I'm not pointing out the fact that she's a woman and she's the enemy. I'm pointing out the fact that they chose a person who's five, six or something a little bit shorter to fit all these actors they had in there. There's no the rock size people. Even the giant bodyguards were like five, ten at the most. Hmm. Yeah, I haven't seen it. I don't know. But, you know, as far as the whole, you know, overweight uh, kings and things like that, it's that's more the the monetary aspect of it. They could afford to eat whatever they wanted and eat. <laughs> wait, wait, flexing on me here? They, they could afford to eat whatever they wanted and as much as they wanted. And the people who were thinner, which now that's kind of more uh, looked up to today, but the people who were thinner and fit, they were the ones that were out in the fields. They were doing the farming and all the, the hard you know, labor. So. I think... What's important about like I love I love how choke is all over the place. I, I can't get enough of that. Um, <laughs> but the ancient history, especially stuff that was recorded, they only took value in the books from the uh, higher up elites, like diaries from princes and diaries from this aspect. Now they do have accounts of people that worked in the fields, obviously, and lower people that chose to write stuff down. But it was more of reading and writing was a more cultured, more higher class thing. And not every single person knew how to read, write. Everyone kind of knew a basic some things, but, you know, this more of a hobby of writing things down. So a lot of your historical record, you got to take into context the things that you don't have, which are the aspects of people that just didn't want to write a fucking thing down. I mean, the idea that we have logs and we have this type of scripture or these types of things that to be able to know what happened back then. I mean, that's amazing. I would have never even I don't write down my daily life. I just record it and put it up for people to listen <laughs> Well, think about it. History, you know, the history books are written by the victors, right? Whoever wins ends up writing the book, telling the story. So that's an important thing, too. If you have the money and the power, you're the winner, right? You're, you're in control, so you can shape that narrative. I, I mean, I think that works for a major context, but I think when you look at something where there's no battles being fought, like Matt, we know about wars from the victor's side, but you're, you're, you got to look at the personal experiences. Like when someone writes down a earthquake, you know, when someone talks about the, the earth moved under my feet and the, the, the land spit with fire, like, what does that mean? Well, they were probably going through some type of volcano eruption. I mean, we only know about Pompeii because half those people are fucking solidified in ash. Yeah, no, and I don't think it's just war though, but if, if there's somebody that's, powerful rich and and in control they're going to shape the narrative of just the general recording of history don't you think i think they shape history absolutely i would agree with that and that that's kind of the point i was making you know the the every 
day, you know, average Joe isn't the person that's able to shape what that narrative is. Like you look at today, I mean, you and I aren't the ones that are forming the dialogue. I mean, you, you do a little bit more than I do because you're talking to so many people, but we're not the ones that are, you know, marking down what's going to be recorded for people to look at a hundred years from now, unless, you know, they're looking at your, your YouTube channel or something like it's, and what it's happens happen. if the internet goes down? That's four years down the drain. I mean, that's the issue with censorship, right? Imagine my YouTube channel goes away. Imagine if Spotify goes away. Imagine if all these things go away. Then it's all gone. Yeah. Yeah, it sucks. Thanks for putting me in an existential crisis there. Holy <laughs> shit. Imagine me <laughs> trying to convince somebody that I talked to one of my guests, and they're like, no, you didn't. And I'm like, well, I feel like you got no proof now. Fuck. Hopefully we don't have to worry about that and it doesn't doesn't get to that. Point. It'll happen if they put like a cursing ban where you can't curse. Oh, dude, I'll be gone in two seconds flat, man. I can't help it. I can't help it. This is what I do in my daily. I had Timothy J on the father of swear words. His professional degree was studying swear words and their benefits to society. He said the C word on here and even my butthole puckered up. I was like, oh, you can't say that, man. I feel like as Americans, that word is looked at as such a terrible, vulgar thing. But if you go over to the UK, like, like if we were hanging out as, you know, just two friends or whatever, we would be calling each other the C word. Yeah, but they like say they, it differently. They say, see you next Tuesday. They see, say the word. See you right. next Tuesday. If you take right. the first they letter say, of all those. You get I understand. I understand. Okay. That's the C word I'm talking about. Yeah. But that that's what they say. Were you talking about a different C word? No, that's the C word. Oh, OK. Yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. Cock. The, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, pe people will, will call each other that. Like, I don't know if you uh, follow any of the stuff that Ricky Gervais does, but he had this really good um, Netflix series Afterlife that he did. And I would say that was a good, you know, 10 to 15% of the dialogue. They were calling each other the C word. It's like why I like talking to Australians so much because they drop it like it's nothing. And I just like hearing the word. Also, the accent. I like the accent. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. But no, it's it's just there's different words that in different places are, are more uh, are considered more vulgar than others. Like C words, very vulgar here, but they throw it around like it's nothing in, in places like that. So I think it depends on how you use it. It's because whenever somebody uses it, they're using it in a negative way. It's not, it's not like a term of endearment with their friends, like in Great Britain. I think you have a limiter and I think people's limiters just break. Like if you're like around me, probably there's some times like I say a curse word, like, are you angry? I'm like, no, just I stub my toe when I said shit. Um, it's just part of people's language. Like when I talk, I mean, I come across people from New York, they use it like crazy. And it's just like, Oh my, even that for me, it's a lot, but I get it. Why some people could be like, Oh, you use a lot of language in your, I had a person say, I'd love to listen to this, but the language, this person so foul mouth. And I'm like, hang on a second. They're commenting on the JFK videos and they're talking trash and they're using that language. But then they're like, if you really want to increase your channel, what you should do is do more interviews. And I go, what? I was like, I have over 3 million listens on Spotify. I don't need your advice. My YouTube channel, I just started promoting because old people from JFK don't know what Spotify is. So YouTube's their only, that's as far as they go. And he goes, my, my YouTube channel, all I do is quote Bible references. And I have over something, a million subscribers. And I'm like, and you're giving me shit. For talking too much in a two hour conversation, he said, Could you talk less? I talked a total of 15 minutes, and that guy talked for an hour and 45. Uh, we're not going to rant about that guy. I could light up the JFK community if I wanted to. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's a topic you got to understand from young eyes looking in. There's a lot of like dangerous, controversial, and a lot of like sniping in the communities, which I've heard from all the experts. So it's like, it really sucks because you got to look at like the way that we have conversations in this world and we don't do what I do with you or with any other. We don't do this random back and forth. Some people like it. Honestly, I just promote people to Spotify. You can turn off your phone and still listen. 
YouTube, you got to sit and watch. But people, YouTube, you need like content flying at you left and right, left and right. It's just like, yeah. I mean, the way our society is with attention spans, that's not weird to me. What's weird to me is the way that we we know we're going to age, but we refuse the way that we age. We refuse the way that we age. What, what do you mean by that? Using prescription drugs, using medicines, using herbal alternatives, using workouts, using um, anything, enhancers, surgery, making sure that you can stop your aging process. We know people age, but people will try their hardest to make sure that they stay the way that they would like to be immortalized. It, this all came to me from a show called Upload. Have you ever seen it? No. It's on Amazon Prime. You die, but before you die, they upload you to the internet. And you live in this digital, like, VR, metaverse world type thing. And you get to live in this world and have all this fun and do whatever you really want, have anything you want. But that's only if the person who is paying for the bill keeps on paying the bill. So this guy dies and he's his girlfriend who he never wanted to marry. She's a bit psycho psychotic was like, I could just delete you if I wanted to. And it's just like, oh, my God. And then you're still alive in this world. They recreated your memories, your looks, everything. But you're just in this digital world and you're basically at the whim to this person that's called your angel. And it's just like if I was in a Zoom call with these people, they have all these screens and it's a business that runs it. It's this digital afterlife. It's like, oh my God, I hope that's not real. I'd rather just be gone and the dust in the wind, dude. It's definitely a scary thought. I mean, the, like what happens if they stop paying? Like you're, you, are you still it. there? Or do you just disappear? Gone forever. I mean, where do you think we're going to go with society if we are entering this digital world? Do you think we're going to head to 100% digital or do you think we're going to find a loophole and hopefully go the route I want to go, which is like superhumans? <laughs> At one point, we were creating psychological warriors for the military, so we can't do that again? I'm sure that there's plenty that they're doing as we speak that we just don't know about i mean and there's reasons why we shouldn't know and why we can't know they can't tell us everything every you know top secret thing that's got that stamp on it that they're they're working on right but i'm sure that there's plenty of advanced things that they're that they're doing they can make a photo sing and dance to a michael jackson song a photo from like 10 50 20 30 years ago that's too insane yeah and not only can they do that but it's simplified to the point where i don't know if it still is but that was a freaking snapchat filter like it wasn't even like some expensive software it was right on snapchat did you see what they do with the snapchat filter where it just <laughs> symmetrical your face and it's like perfect yeah is that real well i've seen it where if they take like say the left side of your face and the left side that might be perfect but sometimes if if you swap it and do like the right and the right then you look real goofy <laughs> it's so like two it different people that's what it is right right so it's like if every single like everyone that can agree that there's a consensus that like there are very gorgeous people in our society for instance brad pitt is like everyone's go-to handsome person ryan reynolds is up there i'm a fan um, then you got Angelina Jolie, and then you got Jennifer Aniston, you know, my girl Mariah Carey. Is their face just 100% symmetrical? Is that why we like them so much? Or is it just like, I don't know, like, could that be a thing? I know we have, well, I'm trying to eliminate cosmetic surgery because at this point you can apply so much makeup. I've seen people contour really well, and they look like a completely different person where you're just like, what is this? I have to like splash a bucket of water like the like the Wizard of Oz, the Wicked Witch, and make sure that they're fucking, they don't melt down. You, you got to go swimming on the first date if they're doing that shit. Like, that's, that's smart, shit. dude. That's <laughs> smart. Right, right. I love when people go like, I'm going to take them to the movies on a first date. I'm like, 
So you're going to spend two and a half hours sitting beside each other, not going to talk, not going to get to know. Then, like, what's your second date? At this point, you should know their middle name. You should know their birth date. You should know a bunch of the basic stuff. Well, I think the speaking as somebody who, at first, I can be very introverted and, and not an extremely social person at first. I feel like something like dinner in a movie is a good way to have a breather. As a person who sometimes can struggle with interactions, if you're watching a movie, there's not the expectation that you need to be talking to the person you're with the whole time. Um, it kind of gives you, I guess, some time to think and maybe in your mind plan what you're going to do next, I think. Maybe, but I, I would say for the most part, I agree with what you're saying, though. What about going to the movies by yourself? Um, I don't think I've ever done it, but I, I keep saying that I should because it's, I mean, probably great. You're not, you know, it's not like you have somebody else who is right there, unless there's just other people in the theater, I guess, but making noise or trying to talk to you or what have you, or, or making it so that, you know, you, you're late or whatever, like you're in control. I think it could be fun. It could be a, a nice, you know, would they, would they consider that to be like self-care? Like if you enjoy that, probably. I never enjoyed going to the movies, but I've been going to the movies a lot recently. Yeah. By yourself? No, with somebody. Okay. Oh, okay. No, not like that at all. <laughs> just going to, I mean, I, I enjoy, I just. It's that, that girl that gave you her number. At no. work, yeah. yeah. After I told her, you don't remember my name. No, that's a good pickup line. Someone could just use that. That's great. Um, but no, no, no. It's just going to the movies. I just is money. Do you didn't want to spend? But I think I started treating myself more. I was very stingy with my money. I know we've talked about that a couple of times. But I don't know. I just I have fun. You got to increase your happiness at some points. I've been getting like to those. I get it now where people are like, I have those critical moments of like, holy shit, like you're freaking out and you're having panic attacks. I get it. I don't know if it's that or my car is leaking carbon monoxide. Oh, geez. Sometimes well, I'm driving. I'm like, am I having a panic attack or something? I got to like pull over to the side of the road. I'm like, I'm smelling gas. And it's like, maybe there's something going on there. Vision gets all blurry. Maybe you should get your car looked at. I'll, I'll say that. But I can only I, hope I, to God I have like a giant aneurysm at one point. No, oh, no. Kidding. No, that's no, no, a terrible you, way to go. Trust me, you don't want that. I, uh, I've had a few people that I know where that's happened. Um, one person that I know, she lost her mother to that. Jeez. And um, it's, you know, obviously if it's you, and if your goal is to be gone, then that's a pretty swift way to do it. But I've also seen it where you survive it. And then the fight back can really be a challenge um, to where like you never walk normally again, you never work again, like things like that. So I, I kind of, um, I always bristle when somebody like says that word because it, it really can be very life-changing. And especially if you have it happen and you do come through it and survive it. Uh, that's, that's tough because you've got to know, like my, my stepfather had one rupture five years ago and I feel like he got, he's got to know deep down that he's limited in what he can do compared to how he used to be. Like it, you, you've almost got to feel trapped in your own body. I feel like he, he's never said that, but I feel like that's gotta be how it is. Like that's, if it were to happen to me, I would just want to go just because of of how tough it is to fight back from it i'm not shitting on the biomechanical community because i've talked to i'm friends with plenty of them that have been on the show but um yeah that's a one area of technology just has not helped out like we still have people that use a walker with tennis balls on the fucking bottom of it you tell me we can't just spend 10 minutes you know investing into some good equipment for people to be able to function again i mean we have people that lou gehrig's disease is one your body shuts down and you basically become trapped in a prison of your own mind and you have people that have to use a computer and use their eyes to talk like, good God, we can make people's lives a little bit easier. The most I've seen is like I talked to someone recently um, who studies migraines and she was trying to find a way to help out like 
you know, they're doing brain studies where they're putting like a thing on your head and putting cream and gel on it and seeing what the nerve connections tell people with these, because everyone says I have a migraine. Do you, do you know what a migraine is? I've been explained what it actually means. No, whenever someone says I have a migraine, that's not what they're having. A migraine is something crazy, like insane, but they figured out that there might, there's a person, or she said it wasn't her study, but it was someone that she knows that she's working with is working on, you know, how they have the, the, the glasses you can put on, you can see color like yeah. people that are colorblind. Sure. They have these glasses that can help change the frequency of some of the light to be able to help people with seizures, epilepsy, all these types of things. Cause what they start like your brain as it's perceiving the information in front of you you're it's going into your eyes and your brain's perceiving it and then making mechanisms mostly it's so fast you're not even really being able to focus on it it's just happening in front of you in real time your brain's processing imagery and this is all it's going to get us kind of, you want to talk about time time is not time travel sorry but time <laughs> <laughs> the real study of time is an actual school class you can do. And the study of time is called the temporal experience. I've had a couple of guests on here talk about the temporal experience, mostly relates to video games. When someone's playing a video game, the temporal experience is, is altered. It's manipulated. And you start realizing that there's a philosophy study of time. And what that is, is time is not Time is a construct that that's going to sound such like a piece of shit right now, but give me a second. Time is a construct. That's the piece of shit part. I've heard that so many times. Time is a construct that we all abide by. Me and you agree that since we're on the East Coast, we live in a certain time zone. It's 238 or it's whatever time that this is being recorded and we're talking about it. Now, when you talk about everyone's time is different, time zone, sure, but we all go by the basic distinction of how time moves. One minute, one second one hour that's time your temporal experience when someone says time flies when you're having fun time isn't just speeding up for you like what i thought when i was a kid when i was in school and time was going so slow i was like some motherfucker must be having a horrible time right now because i would think like every day that the time clock of the world would be on the basis of one of one person on earth's life and at each day would be a new person so whenever i would be like Holy shit, time went quick today in school. It wasn't that I was having fun. It was someone was having a great day. And that's what happened. That was what I thought of when I was like in fourth grade. It's a great movie if ever anyone ever wants to write a movie. But back to the deep thoughts for a fourth grader. Yeah, I know. I thought a lot when I was, I daydreamed a lot. I did not get any schoolwork done. My parents were pissed. Um, but back to the temporal experience thing. So when you're not perceiving time, you're just not perceiving the one that's around you. So if me and you end up getting talking, and if we ended up branding about the government, time would fly so quick for me. But it's it's not time moving different. It's just I'm not choosing to take account of the information of the time processing speed that my brain is now paying attention to. Now that I'm starting to talk about time, I'm looking at the bottom of my quarter to look at the time clock. So it's like your temporal experience in video games, people's altered experience because they're being inversed in another world where their brain is not perceptive to the time around them. It's only perceptive to the video game. And then you take off your headset and realize it's been 40 years and you need to get a job. <laughs> and you haven't fed your cat in 40 years. <laughs> so you have a dead cat. <laughs> they have nine. No, lives. but. <laughs> but no that's that's true like if you're doing something that you enjoy like i think the last time we spoke um you looked at the clock and you said we've been talking almost two hours and i didn't believe you but it was true because we just end up talking and you don't think about the time like now we're talking about it i'm looking at the time like oh yeah that's what time it is but i don't think about the time when i'm sitting here talking to you but if i'm at work or I'm somewhere doing something I don't want to be doing, I'm looking at the clock and I'm, I'm counting down. I'm waiting for it to be over. It's just different. You know, if you're, if you're enjoying it, you're not obsessing over when's this going to end, right? Because you don't want it to. I did bring up the question of, is time perception different if someone has ADHD? And they did go into that a little bit, that there is some studies on that, that you are experiencing things necessarily at a different rate. For instance, me talking very, very fast in an episode, I can come off like I'm on like 10 cups of coffee, but then like I try and match my guest's pace and speaking, but a lot of it's fast paced because, and I noticed this when I started doing like cardio sessions, if I do three hours of cardio, 
after that, my brain is like everything just becomes more in tune and focus. And it's like everything slowed down. Like I'm on a drug. Like someone just took my energy out of me. And now I'm like normal speed. And I'm like, well, this is what must be like to just function normal. But then most of the time I'm just ramped up to like an extreme. Like everyone always says, like, I wish I had your energy. And I'm like, it's kind of like a curse. You don't get any sleep. But, you know, you're ramped up like 24 seven. It's like, I think Brooklyn nine, nine, I think the show is called where they did an Andy Samberg show. It was them drinking coffee. And they had like four cups and the guy comes in and goes, wait, don't drink another glass. He's like, why are you talking so slow? He's like, I'm not, I'm normal. We're all normal. And like everything's slow mode. And then it shows them and they're like talking super fast. And I'm like, that's ADHD interesting okay i can't stop bullets but that would be a talent right there that would be. you could do that yeah that would be impressive or at least make the gun not fire you know when you see the self-defense videos where the guy sticks his finger in the trigger slot and the guy can't shoot him i'm like i would like to see this happen in real time when a mugger takes a gun out and does a freaking a gangster move where they stick it to your chest no, they're going to stand at a distance and Batman and Robin your ass, or is it Bruce Wayne and Martha Wayne your ass? They're going to shoot you from a distance while your little kid watches. Oh my god! I would like and, to and see again, a spinoff of that movie though, where they where that Bruce Wayne dies in that alley, and then his father becomes Batman and his mother becomes the Joker. Oh. I saw that on the internet. I'm not stealing it. I'm just saying I saw it. Oh, that. okay. It's not okay. a real movie, but they should make one. They're making a Winnie Pooh horror movie. Stop it. Are you serious? You haven't seen it either? I found this out yesterday. I was so excited. No, stop. It's called Blood you're, and Honey. You're pulling my leg. Stop it. I would show you the trailer, but it would give us a copyright strike. Yeah, okay. I believe you then. Why? Why is there a need to do that? Apparently, like, they killed and ate Eeyore. And Christopher Robin had left them after their last adventure. And he came back like 20 years later. And I'm pretty sure they killed Christopher Robin because like the whole movie is like them killing people. And dude, it's the craziest thing. They're dr- I, we're going to have to watch it. Fuck it. I'll get a copyright strike. I don't care. Well, no, I mean, don't get a strike. But who's making this movie? Is, is Winnie the Pooh not property of disney anymore that's that... what i said who got disney to sign off on that disney would sue them seven ways different right because i don't think this is what they want people to is it disney or is it Winnie pixar? The Pooh? pixar's part of disney disney Ooh. owns everything <laughs> yeah no they do i found a file i've said this on the show a couple of times on the fbi website about walt disney mm. yeah i'm sure sure it's weird when you start realizing that every time he's pointing in his in his thing they photoshopped a cigarette out of his fingers really yeah well i guess because he was associated with you know theme parks and stuff the kids are gonna watch everything's for the kids you know we have to rat out a couple of our employees who are striking up labor unions because of communism then hey that's what happens that's in the documents go to the fbi website it's there it's page 600 on the 700 page document they talk about walt disney with the fbi he was getting the fbi to take employees out of his thing because they were striking up labor unions i was like damn that's a good financial decision did you read that whole document i did it's bad part, <laughs> bad part about adhd you go onto the documents looking for one thing and next thing you know you come across a thing that says jonestown and you're like i gotta read this and then that's 900 parts in each page or each document of each part is 600 pages long so that's like over that's a lot of documents, like 10,000 something. So I was just scrolling through. I was like, where's the good stuff? And then I started finding a lot of like audio tapes of the sermons he was giving, the number of people, like 900 something people that died. You're like, oh God. Wow. Wow. See, I'm doing cool lot. stuff. What are you doing with your life? I definitely don't have the energy to do all that you're doing. I'll tell you that. I, Did you read a book or anything? Anything good? Uh, no. You know, I, I should have read a little bit more in the break between 
finishing one program and starting the other. Um, I did, did, did I tell you I, I drove to Florida? Did I tell no. you about that? Yeah, so that that's something I've done um, in were you, between. I Were you supporting Ron DeSantis? No, I have <laughs> uh, friends and family there that I went to visit. Since I was done with school, didn't have to worry about any of that, I took some time off and I decided to make a road trip out of it and I drove. How was it? What'd you do when you were there? Just drive there? How long is that? How long? Uh, well... I stopped in South Carolina, so it was about nine hours the first day Jesus. to get to the hotel. I stayed overnight, and then it was seven hours from there to my first stop in Florida. And that's fun for you. <laughs> I mean, I've never taken a trip that long before, but I figured, you know, if I go there were three different stops I wanted to make. So I thought, well, if I fly, I won't have my car. If I take the auto train, you know, you can put your car on the train. That'll be too expensive. It's better to pay for the gas, the wear and tear on the car or whatever. Better to just do it that way. So I decided to drive. I mapped it out and I figured out I could break it into two days and that to me that was the better solution i, I wasn't going to go wanna, over my miles why did you need your car because if i'm going to be going from one spot to two others it's either have my car or get a rental car and at the time it was almost impossible to get a rental car and they were super expensive if you could get one it's gotten a little better now i think but i'm not understanding i'm not understanding the two the the one stop and then the two others what is the other two others so my cousin and my aunt and uncle are in one spot, right? And then three hours south of them, I have relatives. And then three hours uh, across the state on the East Coast, I have friends that live there. So it wasn't just I'm flying in, somebody picks me up and I stay and fly home. I wanted to go see multiple people while I was there. Couldn't have done multiple and, plane trips? What's that? Couldn't have done multiple plane trips. Um, I suppose, I suppose, but I, that just sounds like a lot to me and I have ADHD. So sitting in a car would be like the worst experience for that long. I think the longest I've done in a car was, I think I did drive to South Carolina at one point. My dad drove, but that was rough. I would never do it again. If anybody offered, I even a 14 hour plane ride to Hawaii. That was a lot. I would never do that again. Well, I think it, it depends. So all like they did was play Shark Tank the whole time. It was like eight season of Shark Tank, and it was getting, I'm just going to punch Mark Cuban in the face. <laughs> Christ. I think for me, at least, it, it came down to being able to stop enough times, right? You got to stop to get gas. So I would stop and get gas. I would stop for lunch or whatever the case may be. So I would make my stops. And, um, and honestly, I, I took pictures of a lot of things that I got on that, that trek. So I thought I was making a comeback with the, the food page and maybe I still will, I don't know, but I have some content lined up because of that trip, but I would just stop. And the other thing was I had tons of podcasts ready to go that I would listen to. Who, who were you listening to? You Besides didn't listen you? to one episode of me, did you? Yeah, I did. What did you listen to? Oh, my God. This was like six months ago. I don't know. Oh. This was a while ago. <laughs> but I did listen. I did. And I listened to a, a bunch of different like wrestling podcasts and stuff like that. But I, I listened to a lot of different stuff. That's usually the problem. Like, I have too many things that I listen to that. I, I'm always skipping something. You only somewhere. need one show. Out of the blank. Yes. <laughs> and you're rocking the original t-shirt. I respect That's that. That's right. It's technically right. the second logo I had, but I'll get well, you a better I... one, dude. Holy crap, man. We got so much better stuff now. All I, I like the back though. I like the back of it. It's like the 
Do you not see some of the other ones I have, which is, has the back on it? I haven't looked in a little while. You have to realize that this shirt, I got this at like, like summer of 2020. This shirt's two years old. This was a while ago. I don't think so, I have any of my own, my own shirts that are that old. This is my favorite one, to be honest with you. It's just comfy. <laughs> and it really shows off my that traps. That is cool. Shows off my traps. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> well, I have a white shirt, which is my other one, but that's like, you never get a white shirt. It's so dumb. I never wear white. It's always stains. I don't even, I don't realize how dirty I am until I wear a white shirt. Like I walk outside and I, got, I had, it was really bad pollen week and it was like, oh, just turn green. I was like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I don't trust myself. I, I always say that I eat far too much ketchup to wear white shirts. I just, I, I don't do it. Ketchup's good. I don't really choose it as a con. I prefer things plain, just simple shit. And that's the most complicated things when you go to a place. You order something. Can I just get a plain cheeseburger? It's like plain, plain cheeseburger. It's going to take you about 30 minutes. What happens if I get everything on it? How long will that take? It'll be about five minutes. I'm like, fucking what? The it takes more work to put something on it. It's like whenever I get it and it shows up, I'm like, I said plain. That is plain. You put lettuce on it. I just wanted plain. What else did you put on? Mayo's on here. So you just <laughs> you just want the meat patty and the bun. That's it. I could go without the bun too. So need the meat patty. See that? So to me, so the it's ketchup not real food anyway. Ketchup is a non-negotiable. It's like all I've human. Have... It's all human. They're just giving you humans. We've been eating people for the longest time, and they've been lying to us, Matt. They've been lying to us. <laughs> We are entering a world where everyone has tasted human flesh. Even the babies that are being brought up have had mother's milk. Have you been following <laughs> Soylent Green? <laughs> That's a real company. It, no, it's <laughs> Soylent Green is where people were eating other people. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And idiocracy is when they watered the crops with Gatorade. <laughs> Oh, I haven't seen that movie in a while. That was that was an interesting movie. Wasn't, Terry Crews uh, was Terry president. Cruz, yeah. And the funny thing is, is that's a realistic probability of happening today. You know the power what? of celebrities, man. Honestly, I think Terry Crews could probably do a better job than most of the people who are real politicians. Just saying I, that right now. I've been out of the politics game a while. I honestly don't follow it closely, but the majority of them are morons. Like, come on, morons, are, or if they're not morons, they're just liars. Well, everyone's equal to corruption. I was going to actually have a guest talk about corruption and studies it. And he was like, before I do a podcast, I would like to know, like, where are you left? Or are you right? I'm like, I don't really vote and I don't care for politics. Honestly, if you're talk, if you ask my example of what would be corruption, I would say everyone's susceptible to corruption, no matter what side you're on. And if you're on that side, of the one what right or left, you're going to be more happy to find corruption on the other side than be able to notice the evil in your own. That's true. That's very, very true. Yeah, that's right. Let me, let me be president. I'll release all the alien shit, all the JFK stuff, everything. <laughs> you know what I would honestly do though? If I was like president, I would sit down and be like, all right. So what's his name? Oh, God, I'm going to blank on the guy. What's his name? Blasio. Is it Blasio? Yeah, Warren Wilhelm Blasio, I think his name is. Um, his real name is Wilhelm, uh, but he goes by de Blasio. I think it's de Blasio. The mayor of New York? Oh, Bill, Bill de Blasio. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. His, yeah, his real name is Wilhelm. He was the mayor of New York, yeah. $850 million lost a fund that was given to mental health. And he's like, I don't know where it went. So I would go like this. Here's the thing. You got 30 days to find where that money went, or you're going to be serving in jail. I want to see your receipts for everything. I want to see, and that goes to every state, every single person, show me your receipts to the money you were funded. Show me where it went to make sure that all of it was funded there. You don't have the receipts. I'll see you in jail. Then I'll stamp the gavel. That's it. Let them show up. And I get <laughs> shot in the head. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I feel like uh, if the quote-unquote, you know, deep state is real, 
you'd be taken uh-huh. out before you could do any of that. A hundred percent. It's what do you mean? It's not real. <laughs> I didn't say it wasn't. I didn't say it was or it wasn't. I oh, just said, give me this bullshit. It's real. Give me this bullshit. It's like whenever I tell someone like, oh, they destroyed that document. It's like the whole reason we even know about MK Ultra being real is the fact that they didn't destroy the documents they had in a warehouse. They destroyed the real documents, but they never destroyed the ones that we have with all the transaction records in their warehouse. You don't know about MK Ultra, do you? I'm not extremely well versed on it. I know of it and have an idea of what it is, but I'm sure you've probably read up on it way more than I have. The same therapist for Jack Ruby was the same therapist for Charles Manson. And both that guy, Joyon West, is part of MK Ultra. If you Google his name, pull out your phone right now. Just pull out your phone. Google J O Y L O N West. And then click that Wikipedia and read it on air. Oh my God. His name is Luis Joy on West. But Joy on West should pop up. Read his Wikipedia. Okay. okay, so he's he's deceased. He died in 1999. He was an American psychiatrist involved in the public sphere. In 1954, at the age of 29, with no previous tenure track appointment, he became a full professor and chair of psychiatry at the University of Oklahoma College of Medicine. From 1969 to 1989, he served as chair of psychiatry at the University of California, Los Angeles School of Medicine, and UCLA Neuropsychiatric Institute. Keep going. West's work on brainwashing techniques allowed him to exonerate U.S. servicemen under suspicion of treason for making false confessions during the Korean War era. This brought him to the attention of the CIA. He pioneered research into the use and abuse of LSD. West was also active in studying the creation and management of cults and anti-death penalty activism. Along with friend Charlton Heston, he supported the civil rights movement. Okay, so that's good. Uh, Frequently participating in sit-ins and rallies. The crazy thing is, is there's a video I can, I don't know if it might be too graphic for YouTube to pull up on here, but they dosed an elephant with over like a hundred times of LSD and it killed it. Like just destroyed it. Um, Like, I mean, just, it was bad. And he was like, oh, I got the numbers wrong. Sorry. It's like mistaking a decibel point when you're putting in a dosage number. It's a very popular video of it, but he was the same therapist for Jack Ruby. And then immediately two weeks later or not was it two weeks later i can't like I, I looked up this guy on the cia website i said this on the show multiple times but i've looked this guy up on the cia website no records found but you just read he worked for the cia it says it right there but where i did find his name was stamped at the bottom right of every psychiatric record of jack ruby they destroyed those documents of Sidney gottlieb of louis joylon west of frank olson i mean frank olson he knew they dosed his he worked with these guys. They dosed his coffee mug with LSD. He had a really bad trip and he made a statement before he died saying, they're going to kill me. I know too much. And he gets invited to an 11 story building. You can look up Frank Olson on your phone right now too. I, you might have to read it. Recom- look it up, look it up. Fact check me in real time. Frank Olson goes to an 11 story building and falls out of an apparent suicide high on LSD. They invited him to the building. His son is made a documentary about it on Netflix. It's called Wormwood. Speaking of documentaries on Netflix, did you watch the McAfee documentary yet? Pat McAfee? No, no, no. John McAfee, like Not, the I'm, antivirus. Didn't he you, get you, like in a lot of trouble or something? A lot of trouble. So... McAfee's story is very, very interesting. I think you would enjoy the documentary. You'll have to look at it. He basically, he got rich off of, you know, he was brilliant, right? Antivirus software, you know, kind of figuring out, he could hack into anything, really, is what it was. So he was able to prevent people from hacking in and 
You know, a lot of computers today still use McAfee antivirus. He sold the company years and years ago, so he hasn't owned it in a while. But he ultimately decided he didn't want to pay taxes anymore. So good luck. Good right, luck. Right. What is who's that guy from Blade that got in a lot of trouble? Oh, yeah. Um Wesley Snipes. Yeah, he got yeah, a lot Wesley of shit. Snipes. Yeah, yeah. So he decided that he had already given enough with how much money he had made over the years. I've given enough. I'm not, I'm not paying taxes anymore. Right. And, uh, he moved to Belize and, you know, was kind of loving it there. Belize is, is a, apparently a good place. If you want to, you know, if you're, you're ultra rich, um, you can kind of go there and just live like a King. Right. Apparently he had this, spat with his neighbor and the neighbor allegedly poisoned and killed his dogs oh my god so a few days later or weeks later i forget what the timeline was i'll have to watch it again it was that interesting i'd watch it again but shortly thereafter the neighbor ends up getting shot and dies so they're trying to question mcafee and he decides well the, the government and the police in Belize are corrupt. I'm not staying here. They're going to, whether I did it or not, you know, he says he didn't do it. They're going to nail me to the cross, right? I'm, I'm getting out of here. So he goes on the run with his girlfriend and he's like in his sixties at this point. And this, this girl's like 18 or 19 years old. Um, they go on the run and he had, uh, you know, vice, right. The, uh, like TV channel and all that. Well, they had a reporter and a, a videographer that somehow he agreed he wanted to have, you know, his life on the run documented. And that's where a lot of the footage for this documentary came from. These guys from Vice went with him, fled Belize with him. And it, it tells the story of what happened. And then later on, what happened, he was, he was living on a boat trying to find a new place where he was going to stay, but he was kind of just traveling around on this yacht. Uh, but tons of drugs, tons of alcohol, like just a, a wild, wild story. Um, he was very crafty. Like at one point he was taken into custody. Uh, some say that he faked a heart attack to end up in the hospital and then was able to slip out of the hospital and get away. Um, some believe that he faked his death because he, he died. He allegedly died about a year ago or a little over a year ago, sometime in 2021. So it's a very interesting story. I, I think it would, it would pique your, your interest and, and hold your attention. May I'll have to check that out. Um, yeah. I think the weirdest thing I've ever, something like that, that would be similar. It's not like a government corruption thing. This was just like a missing ship. I remember when I was getting really interested when I did in the beginning of the show, fill in the blank, where I was doing like specific topics, there was this ship story I came across one of the things that went missing in the Bermuda Triangle. And it was a it was I think it was two guys or three guys on a boat like one of those. It's not a sailboat necessarily. It's kind of like a sailboat, I would say probably a, like a medium sized boat, not a yacht, just a medium sized boat could easily has a bed in there and a table and on the inside of the boat and everything. And um. They found this boat and the boat had a bullet hole inside the cabin against the wall. Like the bullet just went right into the thing and a gun sitting on the table and all these cards perfectly preserved, like just playing, like they were playing cards and something just happened. They don't know where they went. They don't know what happened. These guys just disappeared. Nobody can explain it. They think that maybe something happened. They hit a rough seas, but then that wouldn't explain the sea, the, the cards on the table being perfectly in place. And then there's just this gun in a bullet hole in the boat. It didn't, wasn't sinking it. It's just in the wall. And these guys are nowhere to be found. And their family was like looking for them for a really long time. Like it, maybe they fell overboard maybe, but they went near the Bermuda triangle. I think it was, and just got, never came back. Maybe it was fake. They faked their deaths or something, but it was just three guys, a lot of no drugs or anything, nothing wrong. Just, just this boat they found and it was just like what the fuck is that mean it's like when i thought spontaneous combustion was a real thing and you're just gonna randomly spontaneous i was like so one day my number's just up like an aneurysm is just up 
that would be that would be wild imagine you're getting like a golden globe award you worked your whole life to get this award and be on tv and then you just spontaneously combust and it was over boy talk about timing that I, sucks i thought about this if i ever won an award why would i go there and accept it or i would do what bo burnham did Bo Burnham did the most baller thing when he made that. Did you see his Netflix thing inside? No. You'd have to watch it. You know who Bo Burnham is? Yeah. So during lockdown, Funny guy. He, you, you use a lot of his his songs. Yes. So those you songs, post your stories. Yeah. That song is his. Is he made a movie? Did you see that movie with those songs? All the songs that he made on that album was in a film on Netflix. It was called Inside, and he just released um, out Inside Outtakes, which is all the stuff he didn't include in Inside, all the other songs that I use as well, too. Um, but he won an award for that. And when they were giving him like this Emmy thing for an award, he's filming it at his house on the television. They're like, Bo Burnham, come get your award. And he's like laughing because he's not there. And they're like, oh, apparently... Apparently, Bo's not here. And that's just Bo. He's like anti-establishment. And it's like a real thing. It's like, would you go there? Why do, you, why do people win the Olympics? To prove that they're the best, right? But why do they really do it? So you can win an award and you get that moment on the podium where everyone sees you're the best. That was the issue with the documentary about the Russian doping scandal that they had about the Russians cheating out all these people of the Olympics. They go and find these Olympians like 10 years later and be like, hey, you actually won first. So here's your gold, mem gold medal. And the athletes were like, I don't give a shit about this. The moment mattered back then. And that moment, yeah. it's not now. Too little, too late. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. So it's like, would you accept an award because you actually want the award? Because they can just mail you that. Or are you only accepting it so people see that you, that pride of, it's like graduation. Do you really care? Like, you know, you're going to graduate. But people want to walk the stage so their parents can see them, the admiration of their family and all that work that you put in getting paid off and people noticing it for, what, five seconds or so when you caught your diploma and walk off and nobody gives a shit about you for the rest of your life. That's the same thing with winning one of those awards. For a minute, everyone claps. You might get a little speech or something like that. But that's why I like when Jim Carrey, like when he wins an award, he usually does something funny or he's really like into like talking about the issues with the establishment. I like that. <laughs> yeah yeah the graduation thing i i skipped it i didn't go i just had them mail me the diploma i sat through it i mean i i went for my high school graduation like i didn't skip that but the college one i didn't i didn't go i went to the college one and i was excited but see i did everything online so it's not like i actually went to the school or like why why am i gonna go to upstate new york like there's really no point i'm not that I'm argument not. doesn't work anymore though because look at all the online schooling that they're doing now does that mean it doesn't count they're doing most of their schooling online now i'm not saying it doesn't count listen i i'm definitely not saying it doesn't count because it took me long enough to get that damn thing that yeah it counts i'm saying it counts but to me i didn't feel the need to travel up there to walk across the stage to your point for like five seconds and be like, Oh, thanks. And that's it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I just, I didn't see the point in it. That's fair. I don't know. I guess it, I mean, it makes more sense. I mean, I, honestly, I did online schooling and I think you probably learn more when you go to the actual school. Yeah. I, I, I think that's probably partially true um with what i did it was kind of a weird setup so before covid uh the first half of the program or more than half a lot of it was in person like it's it was set up for professionals so what they would do they would send the professor to the building where i worked because there were like eight or nine of us that were in the program and we would finish work and we would walk across to the other side of the building and go to class for four hours. And we would do that once a week. And that was, that was how it was. So we would be in a room in person talking to a professor and then COVID happened and they had to do it all online, but you're still talking to a professor, but everything that they do at the end of the program, it's all asynchronous. 
So you just go in, you have deadlines for when you have to have things done, but it's not like you're having a dialogue with anybody. You're, you're reading a book, you're answering questions, you're submitting homework, you're kind of just doing everything on your own, which is a little weird. I remember taking that final test to get your diploma in college and sit down and everyone's lined up and, you know, using the computer and doing their test thing. And I was on there. I was like, first question and then the second question and the third question. I was like, fuck, I did not learn any of this in any of my classes that I took. What is this? There was a final test to get yeah. your diploma. Yeah. They just check, I guess, where you're at. And, you know, did you, I passed my classes, but it was like, here's the final over all your information. We're going to put it on this computer screen. I looked over to the person beside me. Like, did you fucking learn a single thing of this? I did. did, did I, I, I took like, dude, I got a paper published for an art appreciation class where the teacher read it in front of everybody. That was a proud moment because it was a bullshit essay. You were, so the whole thing was you had to go to an art museum, which was like six hours away on a bus with all these college kids that you're with. And I'm like, I'm not fucking doing that. I'm going to go home. I'm going to do whatever I want. And so he goes, I go, what happens if I don't want to take the bus trip? And he goes, well, you can just have a go with a parent or drive yourself and go to this museum and then write about it. And I was like, fair. I'll say I went with a parent or something like that. And then, so what I did was I bullshitted a whole essay where I was like, the amount of art that you can really appreciate. And I just use art appreciation class. So the amount of art you can really appreciate when you're able to look at a painting and try and put yourself in the position where the artist who made the painting, what they were feeling, what was the times like? If you're looking at a fruit in a bowl painting, are you looking at just the fruit in the bowl? Are you looking at the whole aspect of the painting, the tablecloth that it's on? What type of fabric is that? What is this person's cultural background? And just a lot of bullshit. And it was so good. And I mean, I visualized the shit out of it. <laughs> and he started reading it in front of the class. I'm like, oh, he's going to fucking call me out, dude, as being someone that did not go to this thing. I was so, I was, I was so ready to just get up. Door was right behind me. I was going to get up, walk right out. Thing is like, <laughs> I have never in my life, at least in the past couple of years, seen something that was this impressive. I had the video on my phone. Or I videotaped it. I was like, he's reading my fucking paper. He's going to call me out. I was going to videotape it like, holy shit. And he started complimenting it. And then he was like, I don't want to, if this person lets me say their name, you're in this class. And I'm like, yes, that's my paper. And he's like, this is awesome. Great work. A plus. I got A plus on it. And he was like, he's like, can I copy this and like, just use it as an example? It's really good. And I'm just like, I can't tell if he's fucking with me. But I guess it's just, I guess it's just like, I don't know. I'm really good at like words it's like i when i tried to write a book what i did was i just used the dictate thing on the computer to be able to say what i wanted but my computer could not pick up my accent to save its life that's one thing i i can type and i do it's not super accurate all the time i have to fix errors but i can type pretty quickly because we had to take a class when i was in middle school we actually had to do it but um you know, the thing about writing, like I've, I've always been more into English and social studies instead of math and science. And I've always been like, I was a journalism major when I went to, I'll say Temple University. I won't just say Temple this time. I don't want to, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to think I'm going to, to Temple. I swear to God, that was real. That was real. A hundred percent. I thought you were going to Temple. That's how you said it. I'm going to temple. And I'm like, fucking the, the, the religious thing? It's in, in the Philadelphia area, when somebody says temple, they think of the school, not the religious institution, typically. But I guess that's why it was just, I didn't even think of it. And I just said temple. But I was a journalism major. So I've always been more focused on writing. So, you know, this first, uh, this was not this week, but last week was the first class for this program I just started. And, um, we had to submit homework. So this week I come in and I'm getting ready to, you know, start the live class and I'm waiting and it's just me and the professor. And she says to me, you know, great job last week on the, uh, the homework you submitted. I said, oh, oh, really? I said, I, I wasn't sure if I did it right, you know, all that. She says, no, no, I was really having a hard time figuring out, you know, what to, 
to pick out of it and say like that you needed to do better. She's like, it, it was really good. So it, that kind of like reinforced for me, like, okay, maybe, because for a minute I thought maybe I bit off more than I can chew. Like, why did I do this, right? But apparently, you know, there, there was a reason why I did it. In just under two years, I'll be done, so. And you're getting a master's degree. You're growing up on me. That means I can put <laughs> right. that in the description instead of Matt Falmer, creator of Suburban Foodie. It could be Matt Falmer, master's degree, and what are you going for? So it's going to be an MSM, which is a master's in the science of management. Fuck, I'm going to keep Suburban Foodie on there. Fuck you can it. put MSM. Nobody's going <laughs> to click it's, that. It's, it's like that MBA, sounds boring. but it's MSM. Oh, God, he's and, and managing actually, water parks. It's it's actually <laughs> it's actually from the same school as one of your other guests. I noticed as I was reading a description the other day that one of your recent guests went to Excelsior College, now Excelsior University. One of your recent guests, episode one thousand twenty one. Congratulations! <laughs> Did I guess it? Did I guess it? Ah, uh, it. What number are you on? I mean, what's where are we it's now? One thousand twenty one. Well, that was the one? One, oh no 12 1201 sorry okay yeah this was this was recently this i just wasn't... undersold myself you really did you I, really I, did 190 more episodes after that yeah but no i saw that and i was like oh hey i know excelsior <laughs> i thought that was a fake thing it's apparently real no 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 it's real excelsior <laughs> it, it was excelsior college Temple up until Universe. like august Temple now University. It's, yeah, well, Temple University has been around a long time. I bet. It's probably as old as one of the religions. <laughs> close. Yeah, probably close. I think 18 Egyptian something. Times? Do they have Excelsior College in Egyptian times? No, oh no. Excelsior College, I think, has been around for like 50 years, 50 some years. It's not that old. It's fair. Yeah. Harvard's a bad school. They're a bad school? They're very, very linked in to a lot of CIA stuff. There's documents where the CIA and the FBI was infiltrating Harvard colleges and picking out people that were so there's a the whole like idea of Oswald and this communist thing is this magazine Fair Play for Cuba Committee, which is a communist paper talking about support for Castro Cubans. There wasn't just a Fair Play for Cuba Committee. There was a Fair Play for everything, Fair Play for Vietnam, any activists, which they would find these activists and scout them out. At Harvard University in Yale, the FBI and the CIA would go there and they're like spotters. They would spot out these people that look like they're – it's like any woke kid today that hates our government. I don't hate our government. I'm a patriot at heart, but I don't like evil, and when I notice evil, I want to talk about it, and I want to get – that's why I had um, Nancy Weiss on who – uh, exposed that Judge Rotenberg Center. Remember I told you about that where they were shocking mentally disabled kids? I had her on my show and I would talk about it and people like that sounds conspiratorial that that's still happening today. It's not even closed. It's still open. They shut down temporarily because of COVID, but there were, they shocked the kid 126 times where he got fourth degree or third degree burns on the side of his head. And to get another shock was you just flinched at getting shocked or you moaned. These people abuse their power in these mental institutions. And she exposed it. I had her on my show. I validated that it's not a conspiracy. It's real. And that's my main goal in life right now is that I would like to make a documentary about that. Yeah. You know what I find? Things that get labeled conspiracy. Are real. A lot of the time, a couple of years later, you find out it's not a conspiracy. It was Look real. at the drug they labeled the horse paste is now on the CDC recommended uses of medications. The CDC. I don't want to go into this. It's going to take it off of YouTube. No, but just the, the fact that they they now changed recommendations and they're just like, yeah, do whatever. Like, no, That's pretty do cool. Do whatever now. I like that. Because like, I like the people that's double down on it going, oh, it's because of all the, I'm like, yeah, sure it is. Sure it is. Whatever. Fucking they're, they're seeing the error lemmings. in how things were managed. And admitting, lemmings. Which is they're all just lemmings. wild. Not all those lemmings. I'm going to be a really cool uncle. And nephew's going to get all my conspiratorial talk. Yeah, you're, you're either really cool or you won't be allowed around the kids. 
Yeah, that's a, that's a fair play. Fair play. But yeah, Harvard was one of those institutions where they would have spotters that would point out and infiltrate. What they would do is they would break, like get these kids really ramped up. It's like that one cop. Who was that one cop who was like young? She infiltrated a high school and had sex with like a 17 year old boy and found out the 17 year old boy was like buying drugs or alcohol under the age and got him arrested. And like, you're just like, you're like 30 something years old. That kid definitely knew that she wasn't like a student, but they did that. This is a real thing from a real police. I've force. never heard of this. This came out years ago. This was a while ago. And um, I'm pretty sure Opie and Anthony, when they had their show, they were talking about it at one point. Um, it was like the beginning. This what like, inspired 21 Jump Street. Basically, that's what it was. It was the real 21 Jump Street. I can actually, I might have to look that up. But yeah, she was an older lady that infiltrated this high school, found this kid. And it's just all this stuff where it's like, the kid definitely knew. This is where you talk where I look at. <laughs> that, oh, I just that's that's wild like I could see if it's a cop that's like you know 23 passing for a high schooler like oh yeah I got held back a year but if you're 30 you know 30 35 I I'm sorry like I don't see a way that that's possible but but then again you know they're able to I don't know if you ever watched all those, um, like the Dateline NBC investigations that Chris Hansen always did to, to catch a predator, they'd have the decoy who honestly was sometimes a college age kid, sometimes older, and they made it look as if they were, they were younger and people took the bait. People fell for it. What set up? I think this is it. There's a lot of this. Okay, I don't know. There's, there's two stories I could read. I'm going to read the second one. It says, Real Life 21 okay. Jump Street Undercover Cop Bust Students for Drugs. A rookie California cop is back in uniform after getting national attention for his first big case, working undercover for eight months as a high school senior. It's Alex Salinas bought drugs from a dozen classmates before Chief Cliff Bill or Cliff Bush decided to end the ruse as end of year testing began. The chief was shocked at the attention of the arrest drew until he learned days later that the bus had been an accidental case of life imitating art. Uh, I don't know. I don't think that's it. Oh, so that one happened after 21 Jump Street? <laughs> I, I guess there, I know for a fact there was a woman that seduced a the entrapment of Jesse Snodgrass. I don't know. There was a under 20, all right, 25 year old undercover cop. <laughs> There's a lot of people infiltrating schools. Holy crap. I get why people want to protect schools. Yeah, but instead we have uh, 87,000. Here we go. Arrest agents. Arrested by his prom date, teen claims flirty undercover cop posing as high school student told him to bring her marijuana. That's who it was. So the new girl in class call, caught Justin LaBoy's eye immediately. She was five foot four and very pretty with long, straight black hair. She was Dominican girl from Queens. He was a Puerto Rican boy from the Bronx. And LaBoy, an honor student at the Park Vista Community High School in Palm Beach County, Florida, was smitten. The kind of smitten that makes an 18-year-old boy do dumb things like bring marijuana to school to impress his new girl. He asked her to prom. She said yes. Only LaBoy's new crush wasn't really a high school student. She was a 25-year-old police officer, a new recruit working undercover as part of a massive string operation in 2011 to bust drug dealers at Palm Beach schools. Wow. That is real. That's crazy, though. That's nuts. He probably didn't Imagine. even. Want, he probably was walking around school like, "Does anybody know where I can get some of that marijuana? I need to get it for my special lady." And then, like, he thinks he's gonna get laid. And the next thing you know, she's like, I'm "Imagine a cop. being like, that cop, though. Imagine like you could probably do that. You could probably pass to be young enough." If you were a cop to Dude, go all right, undercover. hang on a second. I think a lot of people can because there are some kids in high school. I'm like, Jesus Christ, what are they feeding you? You're like nine foot. The guy looks like he's 80. I'm like, oh, my God. 
I don't look that young. Oh, oh well, you'd have to get rid of the facial hair. I feel sure. like you'd have to get rid of that. Nah, it's still young. It's still good. Perfect, <laughs> perfect right now. Um, I, but I don't know though. How many high schoolers could could have the perfect goatee? I was in class with a kid when I was in high school that had a full on like everything beard. Like it was like down to his like his shoulders. He was like, he was he was, was he deaf. held back like four or five times? Like no, he had to be Italian or something. Oh, okay. That's true. That's true. Some of those kids have like some type of, like, I would hate that to grow hair on my shoulders or something. Oh my God. Yeah. The work people put in every day just to look gorgeous. <laughs> I used to just like put on a shirt, like this one doesn't smell like shit and just go to school. <laughs> <laughs> I was such a stoner in high school. I don't know why. Yeah, you don't know why? Those drugs. Um, it wasn't even mine. I I was not even that much of a stoner. It was just I would be home, get ready for school. My brother would be like, hey, because it's like everyone in my family just smokes weed. So it's like I'm the only one that doesn't. So it's like, okay, well, if I get to stay home because I'm too high to go to school, that sounds great. Or I just wouldn't go. That was the thing. I was like, nobody really cared. So it was like, if I was still home, like, what are you doing home? Like, oh, didn't want to go to school. All right, move on. At that point, it's like when I took the education system as a joke. I have more respect for it now, but I definitely have a more value for knowledge once I was out of school, like out of college and everything. I think the show has definitely piqued my interest in a lot of stuff. I think the problem, at least where I went and what I've seen, the education system focuses too heavily on some things and not enough or not at all on others. Like I know I, I was lucky. There was a class that I took where they did teach us about writing checks and balancing a checkbook and things like that. But I know most schools don't do that. Like that's not something that like, is that something you had in high school? Nope. No. And, and I think that's more important. Like there's a lot of life skills like that, that school just doesn't teach. And it focuses more on, you know, what's the difference between a, an ion and, you know, whatever. Like they look at all these other things that, yeah, maybe they're important. And if you're going to get into something science related, you'll need to know it. But I can tell you, there's a lot of stuff that I learned over the years that just don't use. The basic fundamentals should be simple math, learning about gravity, and then learning how not to put water on an electrical fire. Probably a little bit of an oversimplification, but I would agree those are all important things. Yes. Gravity is important, so you don't have your society of people jumping off roofs. Simple math is important. And I, I would say some history classes. If I was a history teacher, it would not be go good. <laughs> I well, would it, teach them the real history, but I would tell them this is not cause for you to be mad at what history is. You just have to accept the facts of how things really work in this world. It's not difficult to understand. I would like to talk to some of these woke kids if I could have a conversation with one of them. Just be like, Jesus Christ, why are you so upset? Oh, society is oppressing me. Well, fucking life is oppressing us. Jesus Christ, you have gravity weighing down your bones right now. Do you want to get pissed off at gravity? Go ahead, punch the air. See how long you last. And once you tire yourself out, we can talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like that word gets thrown out a lot. Uh, thrown around very... Uh often now oppressed the word oppressed i'm not gonna i mean it's, like, you, it's real did you I, see did you see lizzo's acceptance speech kind of tying know. back to talking about accepting awards she she basically said she's being oppressed she's a multimillionaire. i'm sure uh, i think everybody has a right to feel oppressed i think there's reasons that there's definitely things in society we should be able to fix but does bitching and yelling at people who just want to know more help no it doesn't it really doesn't guilt tripping people doesn't want them to get interested into it it just makes them tune out you got it exactly yeah i'm not even going to get into that subject matt we got to wrap it um <laughs> it's i'm not doing it not touching it not touching it with a 10-foot pole what about your dream fire. 
No, I don't care about. Are we it. rapping? With I don't dream. Is that your dream? I don't dream. You do. I, I don't i honestly just i've spaced from it completely i'd have to send it in, in a long form text or something um <laughs> okay where can people right. find you matt well they can go to suburban foodie if they'd like that's uh it's still there and hasn't been taken down maybe maybe it'll come back i i did a lot of like went to a lot of different places that i had never been before on that trip i mean i'm talking i went to Bojangles. I went to cookout. Um, so tried some different things that I know what Bojangles is, but I've never eaten there. Yeah, I mean it's pretty good. It's it's a chicken place down south. It's it's good. Cookout. I was impressed. I think I paid less than eight dollars and I got a burger, fries, hush puppies, and a drink. Ugh. what that's not my go-to meal if anything i just want to get like no i know it's not plain chicken sandwich you gotta see the thing is I, I know you want to wrap up but i gotta say this there's a there's a fine line right so there is such a thing as too much you can totally overdo it and overpower whatever it is that you're eating say it's a chicken sandwich or a burger or whatever but i feel like there's also too little like for me Cheese is a baseline item. Bacon, sometimes. Don't always need bacon. Gotta have condiments. If it's not ketchup, maybe it's barbecue sauce. Love a burger with barbecue sauce. But you gotta have a, a little something to mix it up. You gotta have a couple different flavor profiles, textures. That's just me. I mean, I don't know. I'm a simple guy. I don't mind people doing whatever the hell they want with their food. I don't judge people on the food they eat. I mean, I'll take a pancake right off the stove and that's it. I'll just walk out the door with it. Yeah. I mean, hey, do what you enjoy. Obviously, you know, you want it plain and have it plain. For me, I look for a little bit more to it than that. It's fair. But to each his own. It's fair. I'll link all your links in the description. It's been a pleasure having you back on, Matt. It's been a good couple of years. Uh you know, knowing you and getting to chat with you all this time. Many good episodes, many good chats, many conversations, many throwbacks. Thanks for listening to this episode of Out of the Blank Podcast, and stay tuned for our next episode.